we have a grid, we have an initial condition. And uh, let's take a look at what else do we need. Well, we can start doing this iterative. So we already have x0, right? That's what we just did. Actually, let's combine them into a single, uh, let's combine them into a single vector. So let me look at MATLAB to see what kind of, okay, so they are one by a thousand and one. So they are row vectors. And here, in order for us to execute this inverse times this, uh, I mean, it, uh, this is the inverse times this, it's gonna be a column vector, right? So we want x to be a column vector. So let's do that. My x zero is gonna be, I'm gonna take uh, f first, transpose, fp transpose, fpp transpose. So that'll make it a huge column vector of 3003. So that's my initial condition. So what's what's next? This is my, I already have my x zero. Hmm? Calculate g, that's right. Okay, so let's make an, a, a function to calculate g of x zero so that we have g of x zero, right? So let's make a function because we don't just want g of x zero. G is gonna be used for other axes later on. So let me a uh, new file, let's make a function. Uh, let's just call it g, all right. So, uh, so let's see, gx is equal to g of x, easy, right? I think we also need a d eta, right? Because if we look at what g is, all of these, all of these a, b, c, and d, it, it needs this d eta. So let's also put d eta in. All right, so uh, gx is actually going to be multiple g grouped together, right? So we need the, uh, uh, let's use actually four functions to come up with the gx. So let's say uh, gxa to be our uh, function a, okay, equal to g a x d eta. So, and let's repeat this for b, c, and d. d, c, because we have three different equations and also a boundary condition. So my g x is going to be basically g x a, g x b, g x c g x d that's it this is my function g all right now let's code up these individually so that's new function g a so that is going to be uh what i'm going to be calling in this so i also i'm going to input x and eta or d eta I'm going to output gx a. Any questions on what I was doing? Good. So what does gx a have to return? Residue of this function, right? Yeah. Okay. So so let's figure out uh, what what it is. So first, let's split up this x into its individual components. Remember, we just uh, stacked three variables into x. Now let's unstack them. Let's look at how we did that. Basically, we need the inverse operation of that. So let's put a comment on this. Uh, inverse of this. My f is going to be x from one to, uh, I don't know what n is. So, uh, let's say, length my, x yes, let's calculate the length of x, minus three divided by three, right? Because we know x is of length three n plus three. All 
all right good so what where should i go to in, in order to get f x from one to what m plus one good oh i need to transpose right because i i want to go back to the original form so fp is x from now m plus two right the next one and this is two times m plus one now this is uh two times m plus one plus one to end so that is fpp all right so now i get all these individual components let's actually do the real business so that is computing uh the residual okay so we are going to first uh, say fpp i plus one minus fpp of i so if you uh let me just uh, let me just uh, uh, write it first. FPP of i plus 1, I'm going to use 2 to end. Do you all know this notation? What does 2 to end mean? Exactly. It takes every element from 2 to the end. So that is my notation for i plus 1. This is my i, right? So if i goes from 1 to n, which is n minus 1, i plus 1 would go from 2 to n plus 1. This is a very widely used uh, uh, way of programming in MATLAB, Python, and other languages that supports vectorization. Instead of writing the indices with a for loop, I'm writing this with a vector. All right. So this is my discretization for FPP i plus 1 minus FPP of i and I'm going to divide by d8. This is my first term in my equation. My second term in my equation is fi plus 1 times fppi plus 1 plus fi times fpp of i. So let's actually, before that, uh, let me actually compute the product of f fpp is equal to f times fpp, right? So that way, writing this is easier. Now I'm going to use another thing to uh, uh, another vector notation to to compute the average between the product at i and i plus one. What what should it be? Two to n plus right n divided by two. So that is my g x of a. All right good so my gx b and c should be quite similar so let me close it and i'm going to copy this to g of b this is going to be b this is going to be b and uh, let me see what b equation is it's f the final difference of f minus the average of fp right so it's the finite difference so i don't need this anymore it's the finite difference of f so instead of fpp i use f uh now it's minus the average of just the fp right everything else looks right all right and uh, I also need to do this for C and the modification from B to C is even easier, I think. Because, uh, yes, just to add a P to everything. P, 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 P. I think I'm done, right? The last thing is my D. D is the boundary conditions right so that's actually going to be different but still but but pretty easy okay i'm going to have my d and uh, so i still want to calculate my n but now uh, gx of d is going to be a vector of length what yeah of length three right 
So the first element is going to be f1. So f1. The second element is going to be fp1, right? The third element is going to be fpn plus 1 minus 1, which is n minus 1. All right. I'm done here. So I have all the residuals. Right? And I think we are putting everything into a row vectors. So this actually has to be transposed in all of them. Right? So this is my g. So I'm done with computing g of x. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's say g of x0. Let's give it to R. Oops. I didn't have x0. Oh, I didn't run it. So, Flossius, let me run this. Okay, then let's compute it. Okay, I also need the d eta. Okay, it works, right? I got a 3003 by 1 array. That works. What's next? I mean, actually, let's inspect it. Plot of R. Plot of R. Okay. So we see that it actually satisfies the second and third equation exactly, right? This is the residual. This is my A. This is probably B and C. And D is like only three uh, elements. So it's probably cannot be even seen here. So we have a lot of residual non zero. Uh, we didn't satisfy the first equation, but we seem to be satisfying the second and third equation, which is by construct, right? So that's good. Okay, so we have some confidence that what we are doing is okay.